Welcome to Today at SciPort. Today we're going to be taking a tour of our observatory. You might notice that I'm standing here by an elevator. This is on the Space Center side. I've got my keys in my hand. The reason for this is because to get to the rooftop, we actually have to have special access. So this is a special tour for you all. So go ahead and join me. I'm gonna go up here and get in the third floor. And as we walk into the elevator, you have to have a key. Uh, hold up, don't copy the key right here. Let's put the key in here and you can actually now um, press. Ah. There you go. Press the third button and now we're on our way up to the third floor. So nobody can access the third floor. Nobody can access the floor, floor, that's correct. So nobody can access the third floor unless you have the special key to it. Uh, that's why if some people come in here and they, they press the button, press the button, it won't come up here. That's the reason why. So now we open up to the third floor. And voila. So this is the Wyndham family rooftop along with the Averitt Observatory that's up here. We have a really cool fancy sign that's right there. Hopefully it's not kind of lost in the glare. And so we uh, will provide different activities or programs or something like that on the rooftop with the weather allows us. Uh, we keep it locked and open it up. And I've already got some things set up out here and we're going to come back to that. Um, third floor gives you a great view. You can sort of hear the train going in the background with the river as well over there. Excellent. And then the first stop is the observatory. So let's take it, go up here. And right now it's kind of dark. Um, I have our telescope. I came up here earlier, already put something together. But check this out. What we like to do, if you watch overhead, you're going to see that we can lower this down a little bit. Oh, there you go. Open up on the go. Uh huh. And so uh, we don't have to open them up all the way whenever we operate this, just a little bit so that way we're able to look at the sun. And I don't know if you can see, I'm kind of squinting my eyes because the sun just came out from all these clouds now, okay? Um, what we do with this telescope is we use it actually to look directly at the sun. So it wasn't, it has been cloudy all this time, so otherwise I would have had it pointed to the sun. But let's do something right quick. Um, over here, we have uh, just an assortment of different tools that we use. Uh, so I have the main thing is the telescope. Uh, and then I have a laptop right here that this connects to. But for fun, what I did is I connected this to a tab uh, iPad. I'm sorry, I want to say tablet because I'm a team Android fan. But let's do like this. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to control this using um, this tablet. So let's say if I want to, I'm just gonna sell it, go to some arbitrary point. Notice without me even touching it, it's doing it all on its own. I was going to say have it go to the sun again, but unfortunately there's clouds and stuff going in and out the way. So this is one of the cool ways that we can control the telescope, or I have a laptop that's right here that allows me to do this as well. And just as a as we come and go with it, you just try to say, hey. If there's something out in the sky at night, uh, if we can get a nice video shot of it, then we can do that. But mainly this is used just to observe the sun. Uh, one way that we're, now you're always told never ever look at the sun. Totally understand. So s for that reason, we have some safety things that we're doing. Um, for this telescope, this has a very special filter in it. And that filter allows us to where we can look at the sun safely through that telescope. It's very shiny, very reflective, if you, excuse me, but it filters out sunlight that allows us to look at the sun. And then on the back end under this, we have right here, there's a couple of, of the camera right there that's attached to the eyepiece. And so that camera actually has a video signal that goes all the way downstairs to the first floor. And we'll show you that later on. Um, we have the fan up here to keep some of the bugs away because, <laughs> uh, and then I, I have to point this out <clears throat> because during the summertime, 
it can get it can get hot up here, right? <laughs> so we have, have this portable air conditioner right here, and it's mainly for to help the laptop from 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 getting overheated. But sometimes, uh, you know, if it gets a little too hot, point it at myself, cool down, and then get back to work. Uh, so there's a lot of little tiny steps that it takes to make all this work together, and I'm happy to do it. Uh, and just to be able to bring the sun to you all in real time, which I'll show you downstairs. So that's sort of the gist of it. If you if, have any questions, you can feel free to comment below or visit us in Cyport. If come here directly to visit us when we reopen or uh, send an email, gandrews.cyport.org, and I'm always happy to uh, be able to assist. Hey, well, welcome back. So you saw what we have upstairs, and all of that is to bring you the sun um, to your eye, so to speak. So by starting off, we have here, this is part of the Averitt Solar Observatory, the downstairs part, and we actually have a couple of monitors. Uh, the monitor on this side to my left is usually used to show what it looks like outside. Um, but what we're doing now is we're showing you some uh, wonderful images instead from the sun. So there's a variety of telescopes that are out, out there in uh, orbiting around Earth, and they look at the sun 24 seven. So even when we have clouds or rain or something like that, that prevents us from seeing it visually, you can still be able to access these really cool uh, images. Or better yet, on this monitor, I actually have a website. This is called the Solar Dynamic website. And what you, we're doing is we're actually looking at the sun but looking at the same, the same sun at the same time, but through different layers. So when we look at the sun, this surface right here is what we can see. It's what we call the photosphere. But what if you had X-ray or X-ray vision or gamma ray vision or, or microwave vision or something like that that allows you to see outside of the visible light? That's what we can do with this. And this part right here is looking at the sun using um, a part of what's called ultraviolet light. Now you can see all this turmoil, all this stuff that's going on underneath, but right here, we don't see anything, okay? What, so, what other, do you have other filters? Mm-hmm, wow. so other filters, just like we have filters with sunglasses, right? right. Uh, we have filters for our sun. So these are some other layers. So looking at the sun through the same time period, but using different filters. And what this does, this allows scientists, solar scientists to be able to explore the sun in a new and fascinating way. Just like sometimes if you go to a doctor, you say that you're sick, they can do some visual um, examinations on you, but then they might say, we need to go have you get an X-ray, right? So those X-rays will provide a different view of you that allows the doctor to be able to make the correct diagnosis. Yeah. And that's what we do with the sun right here. So um, I, I just want to point this out. I don't want this to go, but these dark spots right here, these are called coronal holes, right? They are literally holes that are in the atmosphere of the sun or in this particular layer. And you see them there. You don't really see it there, Oh, wow. Uh -huh. That one down there has got like, you can see um, mm -hmm. solar flares. Yeah, uh, these loops. are flare. those are what you would call prominences huh. um, or loops. Yep. And that's just due to what you call solar activity. This is fascinating, by the way, yeah. because the sun really hasn't been doing much for the past couple of months. Oh, you can see there's, yeah. there's another one right there. Yeah. So this is what it looks like on edge, right? Um, so there you can see a prominence right cool. there, and you see a filament right there. So this material that's spiking up and then being drawn back into the surface so of the sun. I know the first image, there's really not many sunspots right now, is there? That's correct. So for those that did not hear, the question was uh, asking with, about sunspots. And so sunspots are these spots that literally occur on the sun's surface. Unfortunately, when you look at this, and again, this is a time lapse of uh, the last couple of days, you see there's no type of spot there. And so that spot is really interesting. So let's come over here. Let's look at this tab. And this is a, a, a website that's designed to actually keep track of sunspots. And this chart right here tells you the number of sunspots that occur. So as you notice, during the years to between 2012, 2014, we had a lot of sunspots there. And then now it started to taper off. So this is something that we call a solar cycle. It takes about 22 years. From year one to year 11, the number of sunspots increases to a maximum. And then from year 12 to year 
22, it goes down to a minimum. So right now, this is where we are at. We are experiencing what's called a solar minimum for sunspots. So that's one of the reasons why we're not seeing them. But when we look at the data from a different perspective, we can see some, another pattern that emerges, and that is this one, one of my favorite ones. And this takes all of these numbers of sunspots. We've been looking at sunspots for many centuries. They're perhaps the oldest, um, the oldest type of data that we've been taking um, from an astronomy purposes. Hmm. And what we notice is that some sun cycles, remember these cycles are about 22 years, some of them have very large sunspots and sometimes you don't get that many sunspots within the same within the next cycle. So the peaks kind of the the maximums and the tend to kind of go up and down. Is mm -hmm. there a pattern to the maximums and minimums? Is, is there a pattern to that? Um, that is a great question. One that solar scientists are studying right now. We can't say yes, we can't say no, but there's data there that says there's, there's something finicky going on. Um, if you look at our most recent one that we're undergoing, notice how from the last one, the peak is almost half that, right? Mm -hmm. uh, so why is the sun behaving like this? Why are there so few sunspots now? This is something we, we don't know. We are studying this and we hope to be able to, to get an answer, but until then, it remains a bit of a mystery. So having said that, this helps hopefully introduces you to some of the cool things that go on with the Averitt Observatory. Uh, by all means, again, if you have any questions or this hopefully inspires you to go sun gazing, then by all means, Please come here and join us. And remember, you got to sun gaze correctly. So next time when we do this, I'm going to tell you about some real sunglasses. So stay safe.